the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Male and female pray they down. But I don't see nothing about race in there. And, we, and if you sit there and try to say, well, I read books, you better read what the scriptures are saying. That's what the Bible tells you to study to show yourself approved unto God. You don't get something. See, see, people love to inject their own opinions. And that's what Peter did, right? Jesus is telling him that he must suffer. And they're, they're going to crucify him. But he'll rise the third day. And Peter stood up after Jesus just said it and said, no. And Jesus told him, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. Hmm? Why? Because Peter was not lining up on what the will and plan of God. It says in verse 28, and God blessed them who? Man, male and female created the image of God. And God said, you know what? Here's that word, be fruitful. In a lot of cases on my TikTok, I always say, have you checked your fruit today? Well, he said right here in these scriptures, be fruitful. He, he's not talking about a, a tree plant, a strawberry bush, an apple tree, or an orange tree. You mean be fruitful in your character and your behavior. And all those people who died outside of the good fruit and died in the bad fruit, they are subject to be in torment. And if you're teaching your child to hate the image of God, because that's what you need to say. You can't sit there and say, you, and you hate, if somebody said, well, I know I just hate the color, you, you, need to, you, need to, you need to slap yourself in the face because what does color have to do with your likes or dislikes? There's always going to have to be a reason behind it. Somebody said, they said, well, you know, one of my friends one time said there and said, such and such race is most murderous, racist, murderous group in the, in the country based on the death of uh, 21,000 people that year. It made 41 million people murderous out of 9,000 of the 21,000 deaths. So how many people have lied and talked about people and gave them descriptions about people and said that they are all monolithic and they all act the, operate the same way and, and what the same way is, is being murderers and rapists and all that other stuff. Come on, people. You're not stupid. This is, you know what, I knew that country is tearing things up, but you are not stupid. You know you're not stupid. You can, you know when people lie to you. I had a friend of mine the other day told me, well, I want to hear the truth I want to hear. You want to hear a lie? Just hear a lie? What profits you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? That's what you must leave with out of this study. Whether you leave early or late, what profits you to gain the whole world and lose your own soul? What's the benefit? None. He said, be fruitful and multiply and plenty of servants to do it. And has a meaning over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. Think about that. The bottom line is he said to love one another. He didn't say love just white people or just black people or just brown people. He said love one another, all people. I don't, I don't, I don't want to love everybody. Well, you know what? Let's read the scriptures about that. Because my prophet, once again, is what profits a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? And what, what, what's, what's worth exchanging your soul for? To hate somebody? Is that what you're doing? Is that the whole purpose of your life? Is to hate somebody? That's your that's that's worth eternal life. Look at this in verse 
chapter John, first John chapter uh, three, starting at verse 11. But this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that you should love one another. Not look at that. Look, look, he, he, he's, he's talking about mankind. He doesn't have to talk about just Christianity. Because here you go all the way back to Genesis chapter four. He said, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. See, he, 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 he's not comparing this between Christian and non-Christians. He's not talking about whether somebody, and you know, those people got issued because of melanin and skin. <laughs> you, you even got some people got issued because of people's, uh, I guess what you call it, uh, culture. Or, or you, you, whatever the reason is, that person is your brother. It did, the, the Bible did not tell you to, he told you not to be like Cain. He said, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother righteous. So about the other day, Christopher Columbus, when he Discover the people down in the Alice, and he said they 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 were so friendly. They gave things, and, and they, they 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 would not give you anything. It was, they were just they just bear all the fruits of the spirit. And then he turned around and said, "They made great servants." Christopher Columbus, verse twelve again, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother righteous. You got people who are teaching, you got parents and parents and grandparents and great grandparents taught their children to hate and hate. And you getting up, you now have a choice. Either you teach them to hate, I mean, you teach them to, to do the same thing that's going to most likely lead them to eternal death, separation from God, or you teach them to have eternal life. You want their, they want, you want their stuff to be righteous. Righteous is not killing somebody, murdering somebody, hating somebody, and not listening to a lie. You make your own observation. And I, the thing about it is, if you don't, for example, let me get off in a second. You, you take the color of my skin and you put the label that your parents gave you about me. And you don't even know me. You never met me. And yet you're going to already give me a label? Or you're going to sit there and say, well, this is his character and nature. That's his, it's in his nature. And you know you dealt with people. And some of the people made in, 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 in those uh, states where it's only 1% people of color. And then and, and the people that's in those states where it's only 1% of people of color. So the people in color, people that are the same color that you have, do you have crime? Do you have rapists? You got most of the people in your country, you got in your state, 1% maybe of black people or 2%. The rest of them are the same color as you. And do you not have rapists and murderers, thieves and robbers in your state? What state that has a majority of one particular color of skin does still have drug problems, uh, still have rapists and murderers and stuff like that? So that means is that it can't be based on the color of skin that's causing people to do those things. Oh, well, I'm talking about majority. You, you, once again, you can't, each individual must stand for itself. I know I, I, I've been taught, I've been taught this way. No, each person marriage and content of the character is belongs to that person. It does not belong to the melanin in the skin. You, you track it, it does not, it, you can't, I know you taught to impose a characteristics of behavior 
on a person's color. But that's not true. You know it's not true. You, you know it's not true. Well, some of them are white. Some white people are. Some black people are. Some brown people are. Uh, murderers and rapists and stuff. Yes, some are, regardless of the matter of skin. We don't call the entire country, we don't call the entire race of people based on the percentage of people that are not. If we don't create environments of systematic uh, racism to put them in a situation where that's what they become, we send people to prison, make prison hell, and then that person come out being worse than what they were. But that applies to anybody if you put in that condition. But it's never going to be part because it's based on the melanin skin. So think about that. <laughs> Real trying to say, what profit you to take to, to, to gain the whole world and lose your child soul by teaching them to do the same thing? What 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 profit is that? What what benefit do you have to teach your child to go down a path that leads to destruction? I, I just don't know. But you know. And if you feel that, to me, it's like this. If you gave up your soul and you gave up your child's soul and your parents gave up their soul, whether you're black or white or brown, you gave up your soul for whatever points you may get while you're in this world, then all I can tell you is I feel sorry for you. That's all I can say. I feel sorry for you. And I pray for you. He says this right here, verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, <laughs> connected to God. But it, 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 you got to show your credentials, your fruit to tell you that you pass. See, we, we ain't going to talk about what you can quote the religious, the religious way. See, the religious way is that you, you're supposed to have, you know, you, you, wear, you wear certain clothes, you carry a Bible, you do all the laws, the Ten Commandments. No, the character is talking about is found in the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such as no law. That's the character he's looking at. That's to be fruitful he's talking about. What, what is, are you evil or are you good? Matthew 12, 13. What, 1233, say either make the tree good and the fruit's good, or make the tree corrupt and the fruit's corrupt because a tree is known by its fruit. What fruit did your parents have? What fruit did they teach you to bear? And what fruit are you teaching your child to bear? If you teach it, you, you can, you know, I know we're so ingrained in this thought process that is, that you know, it mu I must be doing it right because other people was taught it too. My parents taught me and I taught them and I had other people think like me. What is the, the Bible said that the broad, broad is the way of destruction, but narrow is a path and it's few to find it because there's only one path, Jesus Christ. It's not, the path is not being, have, you know, none of your skin is definitely not going to be the path. path. Your wealth will not be the path. Your poverty will not be the path. Your skin color will not be the path. It's your belief and receiving and following Jesus Christ. <laughs> he said in verse 14, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love, listen to that, love the veteran. He didn't say black brother. He didn't say white brother. He didn't say brown brother. He said love the brethren. He that loves not his brother about his way. Listen to that. You go tell you, ask, read that to your, your pastor. Let me come off for a second. Read that to your pastor. Read it to your pastor and ask him to tell you, does that apply to me who hates? Does that apply to me who was taught to hate? Does it apply to me even if you taught me to hate? Does it apply to us to, to, to hate? Because the scripture that man just showed me, and I'm reading it to you, and he put it on the slides, so you, I can take it to you. I can take it to my mama. I can take it to my daddy. I can take it to my brother. I can take it to my sister. 
I could take it to 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 a group of people and I read it to them. And you know, if they sit there and tell you that this don't mean nothing, you need to sit there and walk away. Because your eternal life abides in the decision that you make. And every last one of us will be judged based on the decision that we make concerning following Christ or following people or following our own flesh. I know our flesh defaults to hate, but he told us to love one another. You know, so just remember that it's not worth exchanging or giving your soul up for the desires of your flesh. You want to be spiritual, right? not cognitive, right? But I read it again. Marvel not, my brother, if the world hates you. We know that we have, verse 14, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abides in death. And the fact is, you don't, you don't, you hate your, your brother, you never know, even met yet. And to me, you don't know whether the person that somebody taught you to hate because of melanin and scan, and they have received Jesus Christ, the personal Lord and Savior, that is your spiritual brother. And yet you were told to hate them based on they, 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 they're white or black or brown. That is not acceptable. And you know it's not. My question is, why would you exchange it? Why would it be more profitable to, to take on death just to hate somebody for the mere color of their skin? He says, verse 15, whosoever hate this, his brother is a murderer. And you know, this is, and you know, and you know that no murderer has eternal life of badness in him. Come on. Let me come off this for a second again. Do you hear the words that come out of my mouth? Do you hear the scriptures being read on the screen? What if, and then the scripture I read earlier about the fact, what profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his, own, lose his soul? But who would exchange his soul for, for death? What, what, what profit you? It may feel good at the moment for, in a moment to hate somebody and do bad things to somebody and kill somebody because you don't like what they're doing. You don't like, the, you don't like their, you, hey, look, you don't like their sexual orientation. You don't like the color of your skin. You don't like their, you don't like their height. You don't like where they come from. You don't like the belief system. So you want to hate them and you set them up for failure. Come on, what, what profits you to, what, why, how is that, value, what value is that to put, to put yourself at risk of eternal death? To go, I mean, how many people right now, you, how many people right now spiritually are in torment because they were taught to hate somebody just because of the color of their skin? Just because somebody said, I'm going to blame with these people this way, and that's how they are. That's what they did to Jesus. They called him a sinner. They couldn't accept what he said, and they said, crucify him. They labeled him somewhere else, something other than what he said he is. We're all made in the image of God. Think about it. I want you to meditate on that. Because I'm going to try to say, what profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. What prophet? Verse 15 again, who's a hate his brother's a murderer? And you know that no murderer has eternal life about him. Take it to your pastor and I can read it. Take it to them, let them read it for you. Because obviously they got it. They must have got a better answer. Because, and then like I said, the Bible said, don't add or take away, so you tell me what the scriptures say. John 3.16 said that the Look at this, this first John 3, 16. Here I perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. He demonstrated through Jesus Christ. I know people that, some, some of the people that listen to him say, well, you know, Old Testament, he hated so-and-so. This scripture is saying, God showed his love for he sent his son down for the world. 
But whosoever in hate of this world's good and see his brother have need and shudders up his bowel of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but what? In deed and truth. All those people that you that told you that they were believers in Christ, if their deeds does not line up with it. And if you're teaching your child to not line up with the deeds that equates to loving one another, you just exchange your own child's soul for eternal damnation and your grandchild. That's, that's what the scripture is saying. I, I didn't bring it up, it's right here. You read it for yourself. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. What truth? The word is truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. He knows what's in your heart. Beloved, if our heart condemns us, we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive him because we keep his commandment. You don't get things because you don't commit a commandment. It's because if you don't keep his commandments, you're not going to get the blessing and favor of God. You can get a lot. Solomon said, well, vanity of vanity. You can get the things in this world. The world, in my opinion, you to go to, go to hell. You take it for what it's worth. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. He said, whatsoever we ask, we receive him because we keep his commandment and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. Are you pleasing God? And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and in, oh, Joshua, if you want to go ahead and get technical, and love one another as he gave us commandment. John 13, 34, is it God, Jesus, a new command given to you love one another as I loved you. Did you also love one another? By this, should all people know that you are my disciples who have loved one another. 24, and he that keeps his commandment dwells in him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us. That's the fruit of the spirit. For the fruits of the spirit, Galatians 5, 22 to 23, but the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, tempest against such there is no law. Amen. I will, I'm gonna I'm stop here and we'll pick it up on Sunday. But, but at least these, this, slide, this slide is like three or four slides. I just wanted to show you about pride. Pride when you sit there and you hate somebody because of their difference. And you think you're better because you're different from them. And I'm just showing you what the scriptures say. Uh, so I, I'm gonna close with this, this last slide, but I just wanna remind you what profit anybody to teach their child to go to hell? What profits you to teach your child to go to hell? What profit to teach yourself to go to hell? What profits your parents to teach you to go to hell and for them to go to hell? Generation, generation, generations taught to hate and hate and hate to go in hell. Whether you're black, brown, or white, if you're teaching people to hate, you abide in darkness and there's no eternal life abiding in you. That's what the scripture said. Didn't bring it up. That's what the scriptures say. And if you, and you, you know, like Hitler had all that pride. Germany had all that pride. Girl, apparently what's going on in 2022, there's a pride that's going on in another country, attacking another country, killing those people because of pride. Now I'm going to say, well, they got some corruption. They got, you, you corrupt when you're blowing them up. It doesn't matter what corruption you call them. What you, make sure you understand this. Don't. Take on the characteristics of the people you consider bad, because that makes what makes you different from them. If you do what they do, you act with it like they act, you become like them, then you are also a murderer and you have no eternal life behind you. There's no justification for hate. You know, 
So look at this. And so and then you gotta say how what God thinks about you if you try to say, well, I'm better than you because I look better than you, or I got better color skin than you, I got I'm black, so I'm better than you, I'm white because I'm better than you, I'm brown because I'm better than you. Come on. What God says about that pride. Let's look at some of them. Psalms 10, verse 4. The wicked through the pride of his continent will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Psalm 3120, thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Psalm 3611, let not the foot of pride come against me and let not the hands of the wicked remove me. Psalm 50 verse 12, for the sin of his mouth in the word of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride and for cursing the line which they speak. God does not love the prideful. He does not love the prideful. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. The fear of the Lord is a hate, evil, pride, and arrogance. See, in the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. That's God saying that. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the lowly, it's wisdom. He says here in the scriptures, that's why it's easy to read the scriptures, only by pride comes contention. But with the well of eyes is wisdom. Were you taught to be prideful? Were you taught to hate? Where are the people who taught you? Where are they now? If they are no longer living, where do you think they went to in hate, dying in hate? It ain't worth it. Let us start teaching one another to love one another, whether you're white, black, or brown. Let us teach our children to love one another, whether they're white, black, or brown. Let us learn to love our fellow man because we're all created in the image of God. That is what you're supposed to do. That is how you're supposed to function. Amen. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this study. We'll bring it up again and again and again and again. We need to make sure we get this right. So I, I, asked, I asked a friend of mine today, what are the fruits of the spirit? And the person said, well, you start talking, then I remember it because I don't remember it. And think about it. It's not in your heart. Then how are you going to be able to do it? Just say it. If that is important, if love is important, and I'm taught to hate, and I teach my child to hate, but love is the ingredients of eternal life. But I'm teaching them the ingredients for eternal death. Why do you hate your own child that you teach them to go to eternal destruction? And all you trying to get the agreement of man, you need to get an agreement of his word. Please get into the agreement of his word because that is only what's gonna make a difference, amen? All right. God bless you. And I hope you really have a blessed weekend. I'm going to send this out uh, Friday morning. Amen. God bless you. And uh, just remember, Jesus loves you and I do too. Bye-bye.